where I will tell you a synchronicity story that happened to me, which is, is one of the strangest things I've, I've heard of. I've heard many synchronicity stories. And it does lend itself to something like an explanation. And who knows if that's correct. But Okay, so this is, um, it's the, the year 2000, and me and a couple of partners start a nonprofit called the Boundary Institute. And we're looking for a place to have the offices. And at the time, uh, Silicon Valley was doing really well. It was, it was before the dot-com crash. And so uh, finding office space was very expensive. And so we look all over the place. And we finally find some place in Los Altos, which is uh, an office complex which have uh, doctors and dentists and accountants and those sort of professional things all, all clustered together in this one place. So. We, we rent a place and we notice uh, at the at probably about the same day that we rented it that our next door neighbor, they, everyone has a plaque on, on the outside of their place. It said PsyQuest uh, PsyQuest Labs, PSI Quest Labs, right next to us. So we thought, well, that's a, that's a curious thing. You know, we're thinking of PSI, in that case is Personnel Services Incorporated or something like that, because like we're, we're the only nonprofit that knew, especially new, and certainly in Silicon Valley is doing Psy Research. We thought, well, okay, that seems like a nice, nice coincidence. But there's nobody in there. The curtains were closed. There was no one in there, so we couldn't even introduce ourselves. So about a month goes by, and I'm living close enough so I can walk to work. So I walked to work a certain way and decided, this day I'm going to walk a different way. I wanted to see what some of the other places were that were in this complex. So I walk a different way, and now I pass an office that said uh, PsyQuest, Inc. So I'm thinking, oh, well, these must be part of the other people. There's no one in here either, so I don't know what it is. So I'm thinking, well, it's still a coincidence. It's, we don't know what they are. So in the offices now... We have uh, something like four or five rooms. My office is up against the wall, which is abutting the SideQuest lab labs. And I put my whiteboard, it says like my whiteboard is over here and the SideQuest labs on the other side. I have no idea what they do. And I'm drawing on the board what I want our lab to look like. So I want a, a, a certain shielded room and I want a, a certain chair in it and I want certain things in it. I'm drawing on the board and thinking about it a lot. And we don't have very much of anything else in the lab at this point because we're just new. So every day now I'm walking past SciQuest Labs and hoping there's somebody in there because uh, I want to introduce ourselves and tell them about the joke of you know, what we do. So finally I see somebody in there and knock on the door and the person opens the door and I say, Hi, my name is... And I thought that he was going to have a heart attack because he opens the door, his mouth drops open. And before I can introduce myself, he said... Dean Radin? And um, now, of course, I'm confused because how could he know who I am? Because we have never met before. I don't recognize this guy. So the reason why he looks so shocked is because he was actually back in, in the room somewhere back there, engaged in a, uh, a yoga practice in which you manifest things. So he had been spending the last two months manifesting me. He wanted to get in contact with me. Why? Because SciQuest Labs was his laboratory portion of actual Sci research, just like we were doing. And the other place was his office. It was his office, and this is his laboratory. And he is, he is his own for-profit Sci research lab, of which there's probably no other one like it anywhere in the world. So the guy who started this, his name is John Krakauer, he is the guy who developed the Apple Power Book. So he did pretty well at Apple. He cashed out and he decided he wanted to do what he always wanted to do, which was to do cyber search. But in order to, to both get money and to develop uh, his, his business, he wanted to attract certain people to be on his board of directors, including me. He had no idea that I was in Silicon Valley. He had certainly no idea that we just put a place next to his, his lab. So. After he got over the shock, and after I got over the shock, because when he told me this, I felt very disoriented. Like, what do you mean you were dreaming me into existence? I, I thought it had free will and just came over to the door. So he said, well, what, do you want to see the lab? Yeah, I want to see the lab. So we, we, we go inside and we go around the corner, and this is the box that I was drawing on my wall. And this 
box, this, this laboratory, which is a shielded room with a certain kind of chair in it, like a captain's chair, a bunch of stuff in there. This is on the other side of the wall where I was drawing what, so I was kind of manifesting or clairvoyance what I wanted, which was there. It was like right next door. And this, this freaked us out majorly. And then, so I told the other people and the, the other members of, of our group, and they all freaked out. I mean, because this is impossible. You, it, there are no cases, it's like a, a probability of zero that you can't have this sort of thing happen. So, we, so, so, so John and I were thinking then, well, how could this synchronicity possibly have occurred? And we thought that it, it actually seems a lot like a gravitational attraction. That we we're both have very high intensity. He's drawing me in. I'm literally drawing what I want. And it's as though we're, we're like uh, your intentions are a gravitational density that create that that pull things together. So we're like orbiting around each other, orbiting and orbiting, and eventually we we just we, we settle together just like you would in deep space. The, the things clump together because in the intensity of the intention is change is warping space time, and, and we end up two sci research places in the world next to each other right next to each other so you know who knows what's really going on there but very strong intention on his part very strong intention on our part to do what we wanted to what i wanted which was the lab next door because now we didn't have to do anything because we you know i drew it in and he drew me in and that's the strangest synchronicity that i know of Incredible. Yeah. So I've, I've, you know, I've heard a lot of other people with, with stories like this, and it's meaningful to the individual. This one is strange on its own rights because of the of the a priori unlikelihood of two things like this clumping together right next to each other. So, so it's like 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 intention and gravity, mass, something. You know, if it's if it really is consciousness that's emerging into the world at large, and you have two very high intentions that are manipulating consciousness emerging into the world, and it does create something like a gravitational vortex that sucks it together.